Glass Cannon Nation. It's your old buddy, Troy LaValle. I'm coming to you live from my home, my, my humble abode. I didn't have this home when we started the Glass Cannon Network. I, I lived in a, in a shoebox in the city. And now I have a palatial estate. That's not true. I have a nice, comfortable home uh, here in Westchester. But uh, we are here tonight for the 2021 State of the Nation. Oddly enough, only the second State of the Nation we've done in the going on six years that we've been a company. This is wild. I have going on like nine pages of notes for this, but I don't have any notes on how to open this. I really... Uh, I feel sick to my stomach, sick to my stomach, yeah, but not nerves. Like I don't get those performance, uh, performance nerves type thing. Maybe a little bit before a glass cannon live, but, uh, just nerves because I'm about to drop more information than we've ever, uh, released about our network in one sitting. I am, I'm going to talk about everything. I'm going to talk about everything for the next year and beyond. I don't think there is a stone that is going to be left unturned by the time this broadcast ends. I, uh, I got my good buddy Brennan uh, running the chat tonight and obviously our amazing mods helping out. Uh, I'm running solo here and man, do I really appreciate what Grant does when he is uh, producing the streams because I got, I got a lot to do here. But you know what? It comes with the territory when it's the state of the nation. Oh, I'm going to turn my headphones down a little bit because I'm already yelling. I was worried I wouldn't be loud enough. I'm, 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 I'm deaf. I'm deaf in my ears. Oh my God, tonight is going to be huge. I mean, in, in many ways, this is a, a year and a half in the making, uh, two years in the making since, since the COVID shutdown. But in other ways, it's, it's almost six years in the making. Do you believe in June, in just a, a little over a month, a month and five days, we're going to be celebrating our six-year anniversary as a company? Six years we've been doing this. And it wasn't even a company. It was just like, a hey, guys, want to... You guys want to play a podcast, record it, and the, the, the step three is fame. Uh, we didn't know what step two was, but here we are, wildly famous. Uh, well, that's not true, but we're getting there. Uh, I just look at this Twitch channel. We got over fifteen hundred people in here, and the uh, the amount of people is still uh, still growing as we talk. I got Joe texting me. Uh, he says it sounds great. That's awesome. I'm always worried about the technical aspects. Um, but yeah, I'm laughing looking at this. I've got 15, over 1,500 people watching this live. When I started this Twitch channel, I looked right before we went live. It was it was uh, six years ago this month. It was in May. I texted Joe. He was at work at his former occupation uh, as a uh, talent agent. And I said, hey, I want to I wanna do this Twitch thing. Let's, how do we do the Twitch? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start playing Dark Souls 3 and... Uh, and I'm going to stream it. Watch it from your office. And he's like, it looks terrible. We lost the pilot episode. But then I started doing it. And we would have 9, 10, 11 people. 13 people was a good Saturday watching that stream. And now our Twitch, like everything in our network, has grown just to, to things that we never thought possible. I don't want to say never thought possible because I'm a dreamer. You know I'm a dreamer. So things I was just like, oh, one of these days we're going to have this. We're going to have that. We're going to have this. And now, and now here we are. And when you hear what I'm about to talk about, it's just, it's mind blowing. I've got, I've got a very strong beer here uh, because I'm going to need it to, 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 to calm my nerves. I'm, I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? Thank you for asking. Did somebody ask? I'm assuming someone asked. I'm nervous because for a couple of reasons. I guess I'm not nervous I'm going to get something wrong. I, I have notes. I don't think I'm going to misspeak. And if I do, I can be like, wait a minute. I didn't mean that. Uh, I'm nervous because... It's, it's really, uh, it's the equivalent of laying yourself out there, laying yourself out there naked. Like, here are our plans. Go ahead. Tell us what you like and what you hate because we know there's going to be some things you're not going to like. I could literally say I'm going to send $1,000 to all people watching this stream tonight. And there'd be 30 people that would start a Reddit, uh, Reddit post being like, I really think he should have given two thousand dollars that was weird or why didn't he give 500 why a thousand so i guess the nerves aren't because of the blowback of things people don't like people aren't gonna like everything but that's why the network is what it is i really think we got a little bit for everybody if you like everything we do god bless you i'm gonna keep putting it out if you like a little bit of what we do i'm gonna give you a ton of that too um I i'm just excited i'm genuinely excited i, I wish i could even keep up with this chat 
There's so many people here. Um, as I mentioned, we got Brennan uh, running the chat tonight. After I uh, vomit all of this information uh, on you, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna stick around for Q and A. Uh, I'm hoping to wrap this up by nine. I, I I joked to Joe about a week ago. I'm like, yeah, ten minutes of announcements, and then we'll do forty five minutes of Q and A. So he's like, you're gonna do announcements for thirty five minutes, and uh, he's probably right. I, I get excited. I get verbose. We'll see. I just, I, I guess I should launch into this at some point. Um, I, I will say that, you know, this is something that we've wanted to do for a long time. Uh, there was really no right time to do this. There's a lot of things we've had in the pipeline. There are things that just came to fruition like a week ago that I'm throwing in here because I really wanted to throw as much as possible in here. So a couple of weeks ago, I was like, you know what? May 10th, May 10th. And I'll, this is how I do things. So like May 10th is going to be the state of the nation. And then I just work backwards from there. I just burn every bridge so that I can't, once it's announced, can't go back on it. And so here we are. And we've been uh, tying everything up uh, in a bow that we could uh, to be able to do all these announcements. And it is my plan by the end of my, my little spiel here to, uh, to have touched on every single thing, both our current shows, future shows, future plans, and really give you a, a full picture of, of what we're doing um, and, and why we're doing the things we're doing to a certain extent. And then I'll elaborate on that uh, during the Q&A. Brennan is going to be pulling uh, the questions as usual. I see our good friend Steve Geddes just lighten up the chat with over a million tier one subs. That is what Steve Getty does. He is truly uh, one of the best in the niche. And that's saying a lot because there are a lot of people in the niche. Hold on. Let me just throw up into this cup. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for supporting us over the years. I want to thank you for watching tonight. I said to myself, I was, I was, I was uh, watching the countdown. I was like, I'm not going to talk until there are a thousand people in here. And now there's almost 1,700. Are we going to break that strange Aeon's goal of 2,000? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, but uh, hopefully a lot of people will listen to this afterwards as well. Uh, we'll release this, uh, the audio of this. We'll put it up on, on the YouTube, as the kids call it. Uh, we'll throw on Mind, MySpace and Friends or two, if you still use that. But don't you go downloading this on Napster, you son of a bitch. I'll have the, I'll have the bobbies after you. Um, but yeah, this is, this is happening. I could, uh, I could banter. Normally I do 10 minutes of banter. If it's a show, I'll make fun of Grant or Joe. Joe's the easy target. And then we'll banter. There'll be some back and forth. And I look at the clock and around 10 minutes, I think to myself, all right, let's wrap it up. I've done my warm up act. Let's get into the show itself. We're there. We're there. And so, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of round the wagons up and, and launch into this. And, I just want you to know whether you uh, download our, all of our shows every week, listen to every podcast we put out, every Twitch stream, whether you subscribe to us on Patreon, uh, watch all of our shows on Twitch, or, or when the videos hit YouTube later, follow us on social media, see us on tour, buy our merch, whatever you do to support us, it is thanks to you, the Nash. We call you the Nash. You call yourselves the Nash. It is thanks to you, the Nash, that any of this that we're about to talk about is able to happen. Everything that's happened up until this point is because of you. Obviously because of our hard work too, but it's not hard work is nothing without support, without resonating with an audience. So I wanna thank you because without you, I can't make any of these announcements. None of these things happen. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I speak for Skid and Matthew and Grant and Joe as well. Thank you. You have changed our lives and continue to change our lives every day. And if I can get through the stream without crying, I'll be psyched. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's lay in some funky music here underneath. We've got this new music service. Grant uh, negotiated a sexy deal. And so I downloaded this track. It's called like Minneapolis Funk. So it's, it's just a Prince ripoff, but I kind of like it. And this is going to be the underscore to uh, what we're about to do. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> welcome everybody to the 2021 State of the Nation. I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know where to begin. I gotta need a sip of a drink. Oh my God. You know what? I wanna start hot. I wanna start hot with the long awaited return of Glass Cannon Live. Yep, 
It's happening. The five of us are fully vaccinated. Uh, I mean, tomorrow I will have had my, my two weeks since my second stab. I mean, let's be honest, there's still a lot of uh, question marks, but the world is slowly crawling back to some semblance of normalcy, and we are ready to go. We have 11 or maybe 12 dates on the calendar right now, booked, fully booked, and I feel pretty good about probably 11 of them actually happening. So good, in fact, I'm going to announce a couple of them right now. September 2nd and 3rd. 3rd is the day before my birthday, by the way. Glass Cannon Live will be returning to Atlanta at the Masquerade for two nights in a row of Glass Cannon Live during Dragon Con. And then, two weeks later, on September 16th and 18th, we will be Indian in Indianapolis at Helium Comedy Club during the rescheduled Gen Con for two more shows. I am so excited for this. I can't even tell you. I have missed Glass Cannon Live more than I can tell you. The thrill of us being in front of an audience, getting to share what we do with you in the same room, there's nothing like it. Obviously, it's going to be a little different. COVID has changed everything, and we're taking that into account. We are working with these venues to make sure that they're complying to certain standards that are not only like state and local government standards, but are the standards of the C that the CDC recommend. We want it to be safe, but we want it to be fun. Get vaccinated and come party with us. What's that, Troy? When are tickets gonna go on sale? Well, thanks to our amazing booking agent, our good friend, Kevin, groomsman at my wedding along with joe who is the best man uh kevin was able to make it happen so that the tickets for all four of those shows will go on sale tonight at 9 p.m eastern at the end of the state of the nation uh brennan is going to throw the links in the chat you'll be able to purchase tickets to atlanta night one atlanta night two indie night one and indie night two dragon con and gen con seems like they're going to happen at these rescheduled dates and we're going to be there too yucking it up safely with a little strange aeons but you know that seems like so far away now there are some other shows on the books we've got a couple july dates that might happen but they're a little iffy so it might not happen it might that just seems like so long to go without strange aeons you remember the strange aeons marathon we did in august how fun that was finishing book one I think we need to bring it back. I think we need to bring it back. June 12th and 13th, in just over a month, we're gonna do a two-day live marathon of Strange Aeons. We're gonna start book two. We're gonna kick off the tour with a marathon live on Twitch. That's live, that's not pre-recorded. That's gonna be happening Saturday, June 12th, and Sunday, June 13th. Stay tuned to our social media and our newsletter to find out when the start times are going to be and whatnot. But we're planning on doing two long days, not only to get back into the story, but to get back into these characters and get ready to get back in to the tour. We are performers, but we're players first in many ways. And frankly, we just miss playing Strange Aeon. So that's this is our excuse. We're going to do a two day marathon because it went so well the last time. How's everybody doing? Anyone hyperventilating? Please make sure you're staying hydrated. There's going to be a lot of information here. I need to stay hydrated too because I'm the only one talking. Tonight was sponsored by Ethos Water. Unnecessarily expensive and only available at Starbucks. Mm. Oh, that's good. All right. Now, I said I want to touch on everything in the network. So there's some shows that we don't have like crazy super announcements, but I want to touch on everything that's happening so you know. There'll never be any questions. There'll still be questions like, what is happening with such and such? But you can go back and you can refer to this. You can ask your friends who watched it because there's now, looks like a million people watching. Uh, you can ask them what the deal is with such and such shows. So let's get right into it. Um... We have two uh, particular shows that are Patreon exclusive that are Pathfinder First Edition shows, Raiders of the Lost Continent and Legacy of the Ancients, playing uh, Ruins of Aslant and uh, Rise of the Rune Lords, uh, two Pathfinder First Edition adventure paths, respectively, GM'd by our own king nerd, Mr. Skidmar. Uh, this is what's going to be happening with those. We're going to be rotating books. We've talked about this before, but time and time again, people ask us, what happened with Legacy? I am going to stop my subscription because you stopped playing Legacy. 
Will you just calm down? It's coming back. Starting this Friday, we are actually beginning season three of Raiders of the Lost Continent. What does that mean? We're starting book three of Ruins of Aslan. When we finish that book, we will go back to Legacy of the Ancients. We will play book two of Rise of the Rune Lords, and that'll be season two of Legacy of the Ancients. After we finish that, we'll probably go back to Raiders for book four, and then back to Leg uh, Rise for book three. We're going to be bouncing back and forth. Why are we doing that? Because that's really what excites us most, and most importantly, it's what excites Skidmore. So if Skid is excited, you should be excited too. And then sometime in late 2040, we'll have finished both adventure paths. So that's that's something to look forward to. Um, but I am especially excited to, to start uh, season three of Raiders. You know, this is Skid's show, um, but I uh, I consider myself sort of a producer of all the shows. I'm always dropping little things into Joe's ear about getting the trunk, Skid's ear about Raiders, and I've had some thoughts about ways that we can do this so that when Raiders ends, when season three of Raiders ends, it's going to feel like a sickness. Remember the way you used to feel when, like, Lost aired their season finale? You're like, I have to wait six months to watch the next season? I remember just feeling, like, oh, God, and then that would just... that that angst would turn into pure excitement. I'm throwing some ideas at Skid. I know uh, Grant and Matthew and Joe are throwing ideas as well. We're gonna really try and collaborate on something so that when season three ends, you are going to be chomping at the bit for season four, book four of Ruins of Aslan. But in the meantime, you'll have Rise of the Rune Lords back. And we loved playing book one. I can't wait to get back into book two. Let's talk about New Game Who Dis. Maybe you've heard of it, the uh, runaway hit of actual play podcasts and Twitch streams of 2021? Have you heard of it? Well, uh, we've got a lot of games lined up. I've got a spreadsheet that's a mile and a half long that uh, really covers, at this point, I think I'm deep into September, October. I've got games, I've got casts. Uh, I don't want to announce too much, but I do want to give you a little taste of what's coming up on the new game, Who Dis situation. Oh boy, look at this. We're gonna be playing a little Merc Borg. We're gonna be playing more Call of Cthulhu. You think we finished that story with Nora and Becca and Matthew and Joe? You out of your mind, we're just getting warmed up. We have got to wrap up that adventure. That was my real first taste of Call of Cthulhu. I can't wait to get back in. We're gonna be playing a classic 80s RPG that I, I found all the pieces of when I was cleaning out my parents' house, Marvel Superheroes. And then you've wondered, You've asked, when is Warhammer 40k coming back? Oh, it's coming back very, very soon. And we're going to be playing Wrath and Glory. If you don't know what it is, get excited. Because I have a feeling, even though my original character will be gone, I will still talk in this voice for whatever character I create. That is a Troy Love Alley guarantee. Whew. I feel like this is going well. What do you think? voice in my head it's good it's good that's good hold on listen we call ourselves the glass cannon network you can't just call yourself a network without without announcing a lineup of, of new shows and returning shows do you remember now i'm old but just pretend some of you are in your 40s or late 30s when i was a kid there'd be a friday night show it happened late august early september prime time tgif 8 p.m and they would it was a show half an hour hour long i couldn't tell time as a kid uh and it was just announcing what the saturday morning cartoon lineup was going to be for each station they'd have it here's the abc lineup camp candy and the fucking care bears and then uh, cbs would do one too and i just ate that up so here is my much i think it's more exciting but it, now that i'm thinking about camp candy and and uh and Ernest. Hey, Vern, it's me, Ernest. These were good shows. I think you're still going to be more excited about these. Let's talk about what's coming up over the next few seasons. First up is the uh, other runaway freight train. Maybe you've heard about Get in the Trunk. It is our Patreon-exclusive Delta Green prod podcast, or prodcast. Sometimes I gotta say, come on, guys, we need to work. All right, uh, well, not surprisingly, I'm here to announce. It has been picked up for a third season. Can you believe it? Picked up for a third season. It's only one of the most popular things we've ever done. And here is the real news. Our own Grant Berger will be stepping, stepping in. He'll be stepping in as the season three handler. Oh my goodness gracious. That's going to be coming summer of 2001, which means we're going to be recording it pretty, pretty, pretty soon. Can you imagine 
the intricate details Grant's going to be bringing to this. We can, we've can we seen what he can do with Riker Solace. What will he do when he has to deal with the likes of whatever horrible character I bring to the table? Season 3 coming this summer, available only on Patreon. You know that one of the best collaborations, one of the best products of this uh, horrible pandemic was meeting new people, collaborating with people, especially people on the West Coast, especially people like our good buddies at Stream of Blood. One of the producers at Stream of Blood is a college friend of mine, Brian Baldinger. He was, uh, he was a senior when I was a freshman at Boston College, and he called me up right at, sort of at the beginning of the pandemic, like uh, a year ago, March, and was like, hey, uh, can you... Tell, let me know about streaming. How do you how do you stream your games online? And I think like I do most emails and texts, I ignored him for a couple weeks because uh, if I don't reply to someone right away, it it just doesn't happen, and I feel horrible because then weeks will go by and I'm like, do I send a do I send a reply now or do I I look like an asshole either way? But I'm very busy. I used to be no I used to not be busy. I used to just sit around play Skyrim all day and be like, I wish I could. No, oh, I wish I could do something. Uh, now I, I have no time to myself. But uh, finally I got back to him and I gave him some some tips. And then lo and behold, a couple weeks later, the stream of blood was born. They asked me to guest on it and I just fell in love with Jared Logan. I knew Jared from stand-up. I mean, Jared was a successful stand-up. And I was a open micer doing bringer shows. But I saw Jared perform and I was like, you kidding me? Jared's a geek? I want to get in on this. And then they asked me uh, after I guessed on one of their Call of Cthulhu shows. It was like, do you want to... Do you want to like do something else and, and get get one of your, another one of your guys involved? I was like, yeah, you know, I really I would I would like to do that. It'd be nice to like not have to run a stream, just be on it and and collaborate more with Jared and 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 Clint. These are great people. I met them like two or three times, and I was like, you know, when you're just like, those are good people I need to work with the rest of my life. That's how I felt. Um, so I said, I've been kind of interested in playing Blades in the Dark. You guys know about this? And then within seconds, I got a picture of Jared, Clint, and Brian all holding Blades in the Dark. They were like, yes, let's play. So if you followed our Blood and Blades uh, collaboration we've done with them, Joe and I have been having an, an absolute blast. And one thing led to another, and we just knew that we needed to continue working with each other. And honestly, I said I was going to talk about everything tonight. I don't think I'm going to talk about everything because there are just loose plans in the works to do great and exciting things with Stream of Blood for years and years to come. What I will do is announce one concrete thing that is happening. I mean, this is huge. This is a, a pipe bomb of an announcement. Coming in the fall, we're going to be doing an official collaboration with our good friends at Stream of Blood to produce a full season of the brand new Dune RPG. You know it's only a matter of time before we started getting serious with those SOBs. Well, we are not messing around with this one. In fact, Jared Logan and I will be, in many ways, co-GMing this miniseries with an insane cast that we're still putting together uh, that is going to be announced later this year once we have everyone uh, signed and locked in. On top of that, we have the full support of the game's creator, Modifius, who, uh, here's something that's not surprising, are awesome and just really great to talk to. They couldn't be more helpful. They are totally behind this, and I just we're just working on something very cool that I think will be unlike, unlike any other stream I've ever heard of. And uh, more information will be coming uh, on that soon. This is going to be available on Twitch and in podcast form coming this fall of 2021. And you know what? Let's just, I, I, I teased it. Let's just jump right into what's happening this winter. Boom, yep. You knew it was inevitable. You knew, you knew. I'm looking at you, you son of a bitch. I see you smiling in the back there. We are going to be launching our own Blades in the Dark series that I am going to be running. This will be appearing both on Twitch and available on Patreon as a podcast. That's the plan for right now. I mean, if you've watched Joe and I collab with Stream of Blood, you know. You have an idea of what the potential is for a game like this if we let Skid and company loose on it. This game is so great. I mean, we are loving Delta Green. Blew us away. Blades in the Dark is Joe and my favorite game that we found in the past year. Favorite. It's just what John Harper and Evil Hat Productions have created is it's, it's in infecting all of our other games in the best way possible. Finally! A good infection, uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start making our own show. We, things will be cold outside, 
but we're going to be heating it up in Duskfall with the Glass Cannon Network playing Blades in the Dark. Oh, man. I told you there's going to be a lot going on. I haven't even looked at the chat. I haven't looked at the chat since I started uh, talking. I'm really just looking for Joe to text me to be like, your camera's gone or your, your mic sounds terrible. And I haven't seen that text yet, so that's good. I'm going to go back and, and watch this later. And my wife will be like, can you just sit and watch Sister Wives with me? Can we, can we just do that without you having to look at the stream you just did? Seeking Sister Wife, not Sister Wives. It's, 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 it, you can't stop watching. Um, all right. Shut up. It's a good show. It, no, it's not. It's really not. Um, all right. Most of you know. Most of you know that recently we passed the 80K goal. 80K on Patreon. Do you realize that puts us uh, number one gaming Patreon uh, in the world out of millions of Patreon? I assume there's millions of Patreon. Number one in gaming. Uh, we've been number one for a while. And this isn't to brag. This is just to show you the strength of the niche. Uh, I think it puts us like 37th overall in just number of subscribers. But that number doesn't really mean anything because our per uh, our per our subscriber per subscription number is so much higher than most other people uh we're we're, we're like in the top five four or five percent patreons in the world and that i told you i wasn't gonna cry but when i think about that when i think about where we started and where we are right now the way you support us it's it's mind-blowing it's mind-blowing you have changed our lives joe grant skid they've all quit their jobs i've quit i've quit my 20 jobs that i had we're doing this full time it is a dream come true it is a lot of work, but we ultimately play games for a living. We play pretend. We make people laugh, and it's thanks to you. We passed our 80K goal on Patreon, and that goal was that we would launch the first ever D&D &D 5e show on the network. Now listen, it's been a long-running joke ever since we started the Glass Cannon Podcast that Troy hates 5e. It's it's a funny joke. I made my bones on second edition. That's where I That's where I started. I just think it's funny to be a Pathfinder purist and make fun of 5e. I will say, off the record, I played about 10 hours of 5e in the past couple weeks. A little stream that will be announced later. I get it. I get it. It's still, I still prefer Pathfinder, but I get it. And so I couldn't be more excited about this show that we're launching. I'm really excited because I just have to sit back and watch. Uh, this is a show that is going to be a Twitch show and a podcast. And that podcast is going to be available everywhere. This is not a Patreon podcast. This is going to be freely available because we want people, you know, there might be a lot of people, 5e is just, Wizards of the Coast is, is huge. It has a larger reach. So if we can tap into just a little piece of that and then have it trickle back to our other shows, that's how we're really gonna grow the company. That's how we're gonna grow the nation. So we're making this wildly available. And I want it to kill. I want it to kill. So, we have uh, we've locked in the cast. This is one of those things that we just locked in finally a week ago. And so, I'll stop talking. I'll let the uh, I'll let the cast speak for itself. I'd like to introduce you to the cast and crew of the first ever D and D Five E show on the Glass Cannon Network, a show that will be broadcast on Twitch and released as a podcast. You, I hope you're sitting down. You might just fade. Look at this, Jared Logan from Stream of Blood. Can I, can I talk more about how in love I am with this gentleman? Uh, just, he's just, he's just great at what he does. He is going to be running an original D and D Five E adventure with this all star cast i need it i'm sweating i'm just thinking about this look at this claire grant nora ibrahim ross bryant and our own sydney emmanuel this cast is unbelievable in case you live under a rock i'll give you a couple minutes to google someone you may not know but while you do it i want you to be ashamed of yourself because they're about to invade your brain space and be your new best friends i mean Look at this! Look at this cast! Oh my god, this is going to be coming summer of 2021, season one of D&D 5e. Hey, listen, if this is not successful, I'll cancel that shit! But how could this not be successful? Get excited for seasons two, three, four, five, and six coming sometime in the future. But oh man, 
look at this. I'm going to leave it up just for a second, mainly so I can have another sip of my drink while you just take it all in. Take your screenshots. Send it to your mom. I'm sure she was, she's been, she's staying up just to hear this announcement, which is weird because she lives on the West Coast and it's only 530. Come on, Ma. All right. I, uh... I recently announced that we wanted to do something special for Pride Month. I've honestly wanted to do something special for a long time. We always we always give it a mention in, in the intros, but the, the network has grown, and then it's always like May 31st, and I'm like, ah, son of a... And so this year we got an early start on it, and uh, we're able to do one of the things that I'm, I'm really excited about, and that is to release some Pride merchandise. And like the merchandise is 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 exciting, but it's uh, what we're what we're using the proceeds for. So look at this, uh, coming June first to celebrate Pride Month, we're going to be releasing Glass Cannon Network shirts, both men's and women's shirts, with uh, the the Glass Cannon logo uh, as a, a Pride Planet die and that hat, which I have right here. I'll show you in a second. This. I'm so excited about this. And this is why I'm excited for a couple reasons. One, I can't wait to go to Gen Con this year, to go to Dragon Con and see a sea of pride shirts, of glass cannon pride shirts. I mean, pride, listen, you want to wear pride shirts of other shows, go for it. Just so that there is a sea of allies out there. Uh, I, I just can't wait to see that. I want to look into the crowd at one of our live shows and just see this rainbow hat. So excited. And the real reason I'm excited about it is a large portion of the proceeds are going to the Trevor Project. I mean, it's it's impossible to pick uh, one um, one organization, but the Trevor Project is is the one that we've chose uh, for this year at least because they're just an unbelievable organization uh, that is dedicated to saving young uh, LGBTQ plus lives. And so uh, we're going to be releasing these on June first. They're actually already uh, packed, signed, sealed, and delivered. They're being entered into the store and will be released. Uh, probably around 9 a.m. on June 1st. So get excited about that. Look at this hat. Come on, come on. And it's it's navy blue around the edges to match the uh, the navy blue of the glass cannon. Only one in existence. Your old buddy Troy has it. By the way, there's still a couple of these left in the old merch store, old greeny. Actually, I don't know, I, ch I didn't check this morning, but so excited about this. Uh, we hope to uh, spend the whole month celebrating our LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters. So uh, get excited for that merch. What is next? My God, I think I'm I'm just uh, just over the halfway point in my announcements here, which is exciting. Uh, all right, well, here's one. A lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people tune in tonight just because they want to know about this. I'm not going to say you're going to be disappointed, but you may be a little disappointed only because... Uh, there's only so much I can talk about it. And this has to do with Glass Cannon Con. I would have loved to just thrown a ton of info at you tonight. Um, but this convention is quite possibly the biggest endeavor we've ever uh, ever got involved in. I don't know if you know this about me, but I don't know how to do things uh, small and, and like... Uh, let's do a starter con. That's just not my style. It has to reinvent the con game. If I could host this con on the moon, I would. Uh, but either way, I, I really think what we have planned and the team we're assembling, the massive team we're assembling, assemb assembling, assembling, is it's going to be a game changer uh, in the con community. And so while I need to be a little tight-lipped about it tonight, just a little tight-lipped, uh, we'll see what comes out after a couple pops in the Q&A. I will say that on Wednesday, June 2nd, I will be doing a live update on the convention from the host city. That's right. Your old buddy Joe and I are hop hopping on our, uh, I guess, I know this is my first po post-COVID flight. I think this is Joe's first post-COVID flight. We're hopping on a little plane. Uh, and we're flying out somewhere and we are going to uh, take some very important meetings and come hell or high water, even if it's premature, we're going to be announcing at least the location of uh, the first convention. That's right. I said first because it's going to be so wildly successful. Eventually, my grandchildren will be running the con um, from their hover cars. I don't know. I'm still here, don't worry. Just trying to take a breath while you're not looking at my sweaty face. Oh, hey, I'm back. All right, I saved the two big ones 
for the end. I said I wanted to cover everything. And I think after these two, unless I skipped a slide here, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit on everything. Um, so I saved our two biggest properties for last. What is going to be the future of Androids and Aliens and the future of the Glass Cannon pod podcast? I said podcast again because I'm, I'm, I'm all wired up. Uh, let's talk about ANA first. Let's talk about the future of ANA. It is, you know, I was reminiscing a lot today and I was thinking about how far we've come uh, since the beginning. I talked about it a little bit at the beginning. It is insane to think that we have like 40 different projects happening right now. That's only slightly exaggeration. If I were to actually sit down and enumerate them, I think it would be close to 40. Androids and Aliens, of all these things, was only our second show on the network. I remember being at Gen Con 50 and announcing it to that packed room when we did that amazing, ridiculous uh, PvP battle with Tom Exposition, announcing that we'd be doing Starfinder, launching a new show, adding a new cast member, and, and the uh, inimitable Eleanor DiLorenzo. It was our first big Patreon goal. We had some small goals leading up to it, but it was our first Patreon goal, and we hit it within no time after inking a, a licensing deal with Paizo and, and launching our Patreon. This show, you all know, if you've followed it since the beginning, it's gone through several different iterations since we began, from audio only to audio with ads to a live stream in our studio with new cast members to taking a break during COVID to where it is now as this weekly 90-minute or so stream that releases uh, the following week as a companion podcast. You know, despite all these changes, I think, whether it's your favorite show or not, I think you would agree there's something magic that happens on a a from time to time. It happens in all of our shows. I don't want to take away from other shows, but there's something that happens on a a that is inexplicable. You know those moments. You talk about those moments. Um, and you know, sometimes Starfinder rules get in our way, or it feels like there's too many people on the stream talking over each other, especially now that we're playing remotely. Sometimes Starship Combat makes us want to slit our own throats, but sometimes those true magic moments happen, and they've inspired so much of the other stuff that we do. The problem with ANA, and um, is really has nothing to do with ANA, um, but it's twofold. Uh, as you can see from everything I've said so far, we have a lot of projects in the pipeline, a lot of things planned, and 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 these are plans that we think put the company in the best position to succeed, to grow, to expand our audience, and to increase our ability to branch out to an ever-growing audience in new and exciting ways. So that's one problem for ANA. Uh, and the second is our plans for what happens after Giant Slayer, which I'll get to in a moment, are so wildly ambitious that it makes it all but impossible for us to be able to support two long running shows like this. So at the conclusion of Dead Sons, I am sad in many ways to say that we are going to be putting ANA uh, on a hiatus indefinitely. Uh, this was not an easy decision. Um, it's, it's one that we came to, uh, you know, before we came back a while ago, I think. And, you know, I read all the boards, I read everything uh, to a fault. And, and I know that for many people, this is not a wholly unexpected decision, but I, I want to be clear about a, a couple things. Certainly it's, uh, it's not one that we take lightly. It's just something that as we looked at our lineup of shows and looked at where we could split uh not only our our uh, well our time but our ability to produce shows um we just knew that we could only do so many long form shows like that in order for the rest of the network to be sustainable the more long form shows we have the less short form shows we we can do and we really think the short form shows are a better way of churning out more content with more rotating casts and more GMs. Uh, and so, unfortunately, ANA just uh, has to be a, a victim of circumstance in many ways. Um, so, I will say there is a silver lining to this, and and the silver lining is it's not we're not we're not canceling the show outright. There might come a time when I'm like. 
All right, well, we, we've got to cancel it. But that's really not the plan. The plan is to, we're going to stop playing Starfinder. And that has less to do with Starfinder and more about our excitement in all of these other narrative-focused games that we've been playing. As we've been exposed to more games during the pandemic, we're just like, I love Pathfinder. Pathfinder is always going to be our bread and butter. And, 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 and that will never change. I really don't think that will ever change. Certainly not for a long time. Pathfinder is always going to be the backbone of what we do. But... You know, Starfinder is just, it's Pathfinder in space in many ways. It's, it's a different game, but like we want to play more games. We think it's a better way of bringing in a, a wider audience. And so our hope is that Androids and Aliens will return at some point in a more seasonal format. Maybe a little uh, season of the Alien RPG here. Maybe a little season of Star Trek adventures there. Maybe your old buddy Troy will run a little scum and villainy season there. So have it be, uh, you know, new casts, new games, kind of like a new game who dis focused on space. I mean, we lucked out when uh, we named it Androids and Aliens because that is a great catch-all for all of those games. And so that's sort of the plan. We will be ending Dead Suns, ending Starfinder, and, and hopefully Androids and Aliens, the property itself, will return with, uh, with new shows and new casts and and just i don't know a new energy maybe but at the same time i don't want to take away from what we've created from androids and aliens i you know we're coming up on on the final book and and this is going to be the last or the first uh story that we complete on the network androids and aliens dead sun's adventure is going to end before giant slayer i'd be shocked if it didn't and there's something uh really cool about that i think that some at some point there's going to be 150 something episodes out there of this one story that is encapsulated in just you know 150 something episodes you can discover us 10 years from now and be like oh maybe i'll check out this androids and aliens show that they do and there it is there's the whole story you know i think about my my kids being able to listen to this someday i'll i'll have to make edited versions of some of them but uh you know it's just so cool that these are going to live on I, I, I'm really excited about that and and like obviously I think there's people who'd be like why can't you just jump right into another Starfinder show if we did that we'd have to axe three other shows and it, it sucks and uh, you know at the end of the day I want you to be I want you to walk away from this excited I can't tell you how to feel but feel excited because if and when it does return it's going to it's going to be everything you love and more I really truly believe that um so let's talk about Glass Cannon 2.0. Uh, this is uh, a big part. Uh, as I get into this, this is this is this is the headliner. This is the main event here of our uh, of our state of the nation. You know, and and I and I spoke to it a second ago. That one of the main reasons that we have to stop androids and aliens is because of what this project is going to entail. Entail for me. Um, and entail for all of the people involved. It is going to completely take over our lives in the best way possible. It's our flagship show. And, um, you know, with the exception of the convention, which I'm sure, you know, by, by the time I'm done designing it, is going to need several Kickstarters or multiple investors or several scratch-off lottery tickets to pull off the way I envision it. But our, I think beyond that, our plans for GCP 2.0 are the most ambitious we've ever had as a company. There's a lot of moving pieces here. So, I'm just going to I'm just going to jump right in. As you know, we are in uh, book 6 of our, uh, our our first show. Our first show the Glass Cannon Podcast, playing the Pathfinder First Edition Adventure Path Giant Slayer. I think that story is going to end sometime around the end of this year it's possible it'll go into january i would love to tie it up in a neat bow last week of december no one would love that more than joe but like i told joe like the show ends when it ends i can't i can't force an ending on this show it's going to end when it ends and i think uh, you know i've run it through the the computer that is my uh, slowly deteriorating brain and i think it's going to end sometime around the end of this year possibly beginning of next year um what comes next is something I've been thinking about for a long time, planning in many ways for years, but really just thinking around it. And I, and I started thinking about it right when I knew that what we were doing was more than just, a, you know, another stab in the dark. How many stabs in the dark I had over the years? 
just to fly. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna write a pilot. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do stand up. I'm gonna audition for commercials and feel like. And you know, some things would pop and then fizzle, pop and then fizzle. If you had told me seven years ago that this would be the one that would pop and not fizzle, I would have punched you in the face. But here we are. And so when I realized that, I really started thinking like, what happens after Giant Slayer? You know, and our business has grown substantially over the years as well. And that's influenced these decisions in many ways. But our goals have always been the same. We want to be the best and not the superficial best. It's like we want to put out the best content we possibly can every single week with every show that we do. We want to play games uh, that we love with the same infectious joy that we played them uh, when we were kids, before we were podcasters. And we want to have as many people listen to what we do as possible. So, to that end, here's what you've been waiting for, I think. Maybe some of you are just really excited about season three of getting the trunk. But for the rest of you, uh, here is the, uh, the future of the Glass Cannon podcast. There are multiple parts to this. Part number one. We are switching from Pathfinder 1st Edition to Pathfinder 2nd Edition. The fact of the matter is, Pathfinder 2E is the now. You know what else it is? The future. And in order to stay on the cutting edge, we want to play what we think is the best version of the game out there and become the preeminent 2E show in the business. Look at our competition. I don't want to say competition and like, ah, I can't wait to crush you. Like the people that are bigger than us, the people that we want to have a share of their audience. You know, a lot of them are playing D&D. There is no enormous life-shattering Pathfinder 2E show out there. And you know what? There fucking should be. And so we're going to be it. We're moving to Pathfinder 2E, and I could not be more excited about this. We're still going to have several first edition shows on the network. You know, skid shows on Patreon. Our tour, we're playing Stray Aeons. Those are going to stay first edition. But our flagship show, the Glass Cannon Podcast, is making the move to 2E. I'll give you a little spoiler alert. Your old buddy Troy has been playing in a home game on the side for a little while now. That's right. I am just abandoning my family and my wife, my two young boys, to play a home game so I can learn this system inside and out. Sussing out what I like, what I don't like, learning the system, changing some things that I don't, not, you know, house ruling a million things, but like thinking about how to make this show the best it can be and have a real st strong grasp on a, a system that's still, in many ways, in its infancy. And I couldn't be more excited to make the leap, and the guys couldn't be more excited to make the leap. In addition to Pathfinder 2E, the big switch, also going to be some other changes. We're going to be expanding the cast and moving to Twitch as well as a podcast. Now listen, while there is something special and maybe even precious about the five of us, the five founders of the network being the main cast of the show, we truly believe that expanding the cast with a focus on diversity is just going to make for a, a richer game experience and frankly, a more inclusive project all around. I have not decided who these people are going to be as of yet, but I'll tell you, if all of the amazing personalities we've featured on New Game Who Dis are any indication of our taste, you can be assured they are going to be awesome and the right fit to throw in to our baby, the Glass Cannon Podcast. I couldn't be more excited about that. And a move to Twitch as well as a pro podcast to me, that's the biggest no-brainer. You all know that video and live performance are, are a huge focus for me. Uh, it's been a huge focus for me as we've continued to grow. And to be able to move the GCP to Twitch is a dream, years in the making. We're going to be tearing down our set and selling or auctioning off the pieces. You know, we'll sign all the bricks. They're not real bricks. They're like... They're paper thin, but they're, no, they're, I guess they're like, they're plywood thin. They're not even plywood thin. Whatever a real thin wood is, that's what they are. We're going to be, we're going to be signing those, auctioning them off to help us build a brand new set for this new show. And I just, I, I can't wait to unveil it. Let's go back to me for a second. Um, but that's not all, you know, we're making the switch to 2E. We're adding to the cast. Quick check. Good. Joe hasn't texted me. Audio's still good. I'm sweaty. I'm so sweaty. Makeup! God, Linus is busy. 
making the switch to Twitch. We're adding new players. We're moving to Twitch. Still going to be a podcast. Don't worry. No, I'm not going to get my podcast. You're going to get your podcast. And it's going to be wildly available. This is not a Patreon podcast. This is free to the world. Uh, you might be wondering what adventure path we're going to be playing. Sure, that's uh, something that's been speculated no less than 3,000 times today. If our Discord and the subreddit and Twitter and MySpace are any indication... Right now, there are, I think there's four or five second edition adventure paths out there in the pipeline. Maybe one or two uh, still uh, like announced or yet to be announced. Um, and you know what? There were probably a dozen or so podcasts already out there for each of the adventure paths that have been released, uh, playing each one. When we started playing Giant Slayer, honestly, I'm not even exaggerating. You probably count on one hand the number of Pathfinder podcasts that were out there doing adventure paths there just there weren't any out there uh now here's the thing if we do one of these 2e adventure paths we're going to be sharing the space with six other shows doing that ap and on top of that any of you out there can just download or, or go buy the pdf look at it see how the story goes spoil it for yourselves spoil it for others see all the stuff we don't do by the book see all the rules we get wrong and so we're not gonna do that we're gonna complete another dream that has been years in the making that is finally coming to fruition uh we are going to be doing an original adventure set in a whole new original world in campaign setting that's right there will soon be a glass cannon universe all our own an ever-growing sandbox within which to play that is wholly our own. Here's the thing. We play a lot of games. We know how to podcast. We know how to perform. We know how to put on a show. Hell, we all even know how to write. You'd be surprised when Grant sends me some writing samples. They're astounding. This, this guy's a tech geek. We're all great writers. You know what we're not is great gaming writers. We don't write adventure paths. That's a whole different ball game. So when we looked at creating our own world, creating our own adventure, you know, I don't have anything against homebrew, but we need to bring in some pros. That's why we've put it together a team of writers featuring some of the industry's most prominent names to help us create a story and world unlike any other in the world. Look at these writers so far. These are just a few of the ever-growing team of writers that we are assembling to create our new, our first story in our brand new world. I'm so excited. I've known this for years. Not this team, but like known that we're doing this. I'm so excited to share this with you. I mean, look at this group. Tanya DePass, you might know her as Cypher of Tears. She is the, the founder of I Need Diverse Games, as, one as, as well as one of the creators of the uh, new Into the Motherlands uh, sci-fi RPG. If you haven't checked that out, please do. She is an absolute powerhouse in the industry. I actually met Tanya during the uh, Patreon show-up thing that Joe and I did, that little Patreon live stream on YouTube. I talked to her for a couple minutes and I was just blown away by her. And at the end of that, I, I think I emailed Joe and I was like, please set up a meeting. I need her to be on the team. She is so wonderful and we are blessed to have her aboard. Next up is a guy, uh, maybe you recognize a little guy by the name of Mr. Jason Bullman. You know, one of the creators of Pathfinder 1st and 2nd edition, one of the best GMs in the world and someone who we all call a dear friend. Listen, if you want to write a unique Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure path, I like to have my first call be to the guy that created the game. And so Jason's encyclopedic knowledge of the game, his world-building expertise, I mean decades, decades of experience make him to just the perfect addition to this team. And I, I'm overjoyed to announce that uh, on top of joining the team, Jason will be writing chapter one of our new adventure and working with me directly to create the starting world. Next up is Connie Chang. Oh man, if you don't know Connie Chang, you are about to. Connie comes to us as the GM and creator of Transplaner RPG. This is an all trans and POC led D&D campaign on Twitch. I really want to change the game. 
with this. I want to change the game on how we're doing things, how adventures are written. And Connie comes from a background in screenwriting, which makes them an additional an ideal addition to the team, an additional ideal addition to the team. I honestly, I feel like we got Connie aboard right before they blow up. Go check out uh, by Connie Chang on Twitter. I'm so excited, so excited. Uh, you may remember Brandon Hodge as my favorite new RPG writer of 2020 as he penned the now infamous Feast of Ravenmore that we featured on SideQuest Side Sesh last summer. Brandon is a long-standing Pathfinder veteran, veteran writer in the industry. He's known for uh, such great Adventure Path books. You guys have played more than I have, but Dead Heart of Zin from Shattered Star uh, and the mind-bending Rasputin Must Die from Reign of Winter. I've never played Reign of Winter, but that has already been spoiled for me what happens in that book. Yeah, Brandon wrote it, and now he's working with us. He was also essentially the driving force with Eric Mona behind Occult Adventures as he shares Mr. Eric Mona's obsessive love of all things esoterica. Up next, Gabe Hicks. Gabe, let me tell you about Gabe. If you don't know Gabe, I'm sure you all know Gabe. Gabe is a true renaissance man. I hope you're watching Gabe because uh, Gabe, Gabe, is the, Gabe is a game designer, cosplayer, streamer, and I think one of the brightest young minds in gaming right now. Every meeting that we've had with Gabe, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, blows me away with something like a new bend on an idea that I would never thought of. I've seen Brandon and Jason's eyes light up when Gabe says something like, never thought of doing it that way. Couldn't be more excited to have Gabe on the team. And then lastly is my good buddy, Dave Kang. Let me tell you something. Let me wipe the sweat off me so I can go back to the camera that features me. First look at Dave. He's a beautiful man. Now he lives in Abu Dhabi. He used to live in Queens. That's where I met him. My first time coming out to Astoria uh, was to visit him when he lived in Queens. God, I'm a sweaty mess now. Look at this. What a hard, I look like a drug addict. I'm sorry. There's a lot going on. I can't believe it's already nine o'clock. Uh, Chapers. I thought I would get through this quicker. Uh, Brennan, hold off on that post until I let you know that, uh, that link post. What was I going to say? Oh yeah. So Dave, I was finishing up grad school at Columbia. I needed a job. I was bartending. I got a job working at this video store, Kim's video. Dave, was, I was a manager there. Dave was my boss and Dave was a screenwriter at, uh, I think he, he got his degree at BU. Then he moved to New York and he got a, a job at the video game, video store for the same reason I did. We just loved film. Loved film and like indie film. And I got my film school, uh, I don't know. I, I felt like I went to film school working at Kim's Video uh, on the Upper West Side uh, near Columbia. And Dave and I became really good friends. If you've met Francis from our Cyberpunk Red stream, Francis was one of those guys. And we used to just go out all night drinking and coming up with ideas for the great American screenplay, watching Cassavetes movies and just being like, we're going to make a movie. We're going to make a movie together. We'd write all night and we'd drink and we'd write some more. And then we just, we all drifted off. We all grew up and our lives changed. We moved away, far away from each other. And when I knew that I wanted to do something like this, I called Dave up, I called Dave up when we really started getting serious about it about a year ago. And I was like, I want you to write this with me. I want I want to do what we always wanted to do. And so Dave is going to be a, a co-producer on this, but also a co-writer in many ways. Together, we, we meet, we've been meeting every week, sometimes two times a week for the past six months just coming up with the story of this adventure. We're going to be writing the treatments and the outlines together uh, that will then be sent to the, the writers of each chapter who are then going to bring all of themselves into it. And, and we're going to collaborate on something that I truly think is going to be unlike any other stream out there. I am prone to hyperbole, but look at this team. I'll show you. I'll show you it again. I don't give a shit. Look at this team. And then throw Joe and Skid and Matthew and Grant and the other amazing new people that we add into this. The camera people, the producers we're going to have behind the scenes. We are going to assemble a team that is going to blow shit up. I couldn't be more excited. Couldn't be more excited. I'm, just, I'm like, I'm spent right now. I'm so spent. There it is. That's what's happening. There you have it. That is the 2021 state of the nation. The future, as you can see, is intense, but incredibly bright, my friends. 
I need another drink. Before we get to the q and I want to tell you right now, Brennan, drop those links in chat. It's 9 p.m. Atlanta night one, Atlanta night two, Indianapolis night one, Indianapolis night two are now officially on sale. We have limited VIP tickets for each show because we're shrinking the number and we're changing the VIP experience to be mindful of COVID. So if you want to come to those shows, those tickets are available right now. Let me wipe this sweat off myself and then we're going to do some Q&A. All right. I'm still here. I just need to take my headphones off. Wipe the sweat off my brow. My God. It's so disgusting. Don't leave. We're doing the Q&A. My wife... My wife's going to be so mad. She's like, you said it would be done by nine. Actually, she knows better. Whenever I say, yeah, I'll be done by nine. She's like, all right, I'll see you at 1030 tomorrow morning. All right, we're back. Oh, God, I look like horse shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's you, my, my children have been sick. My, uh, my two-year-old, Archer, got sick for the first time uh, a couple days ago. He's never been sick, knock on wood. Uh, and uh, it's brutal. And so then, of course... The little baby, little Dash, who just turned five months uh, old three days ago, he started getting a fever. So we can't turn the central air on because we want to keep it warm for then. So this is what happens. I look like an extra from Requiem for a Dream. But anyways, let's go back to the stream. Hopefully there's still a lot of people here. Oh my God. Holy shit, the numbers have gone up. I don't know no, I don't know if uh, people are happy or sad. Uh, I, I assume people are excited. See, I got a text from Joe. Yeah, good, good, good. Like I said, listen. I know some people are going to be like, don't like that, like that, don't like that. What about so-and-so? Hey, what does that mean? Why'd you do this? You killed my dog. First of all, I would never do that. I would only kill your Pathfinder dog. Here's the thing. I stand behind all these decisions. I think they're the right decision, and so does everybody else that's involved with this company. And I think when you have people that are excited, like we're excited, great things are going to happen. So... Let's just jump into uh, let's jump into about 30 minutes of Q&A, and then I'm going to go spend some time with my wife, who has been just crushing it with two sick kids while I came up with this this thing. Uh, I hope people are excited. Joe, text me. Are people excited? Tell me what they're really mad about. Uh, let me go here. I got a private Discord with uh, Brennan for some Q&A. Let's see. All right, uh, man, God, I wasn't ready for any of these questions. I need more to drink. Okay. All right, uh, Brennan is loading up some questions here on uh, on a private Discord server for me to answer because I couldn't possibly look at this chat and answer anything. Uh, <laughs> I want to start with like a really good juicy question. Uh, all right, here we go. Thunderous Oath says, can we expect the second GCP, GCP 2.0, to have the same post-production quality as current, given that streaming makes production value difficult? That's a really good question, and it touches on some other things that I want to talk about. So, um, there's been a lot of questions about, uh, are we, do we live stream? Do we pre-record? Why do we seem like we're being shady about it? Why, why, what's happening? Uh... First of all, we're not trying to be shady about it. We're just, our goal in what we do is like, how do we make the best product possible? And what we decided, uh, you know, I guess probably around the time that we were ending side quest side sesh, we had to pre-record a side quest side sesh because uh, there was some, some sickness or something. And we pre-recorded it. And then Grant sweetened the audio. And I was like, this sounds a million times better than what we normally put out. Not only that, the video quality is better because we're using this program instead of this program. So we just said, you know what? Anytime we can pre-record, we should do that. Um, we think it makes for a better quality stream. That's one reason. Secondly, we can pre-record multiple shows so that we can release more content. You know, we've got shows in the can that aren't releasing for weeks, whether it be Androids and Aliens, some new game Who Dis. You know, we just think that that is the best way to get more product out there. The alternative is less content and less quality. And while 
while people enjoy that live experience, after doing the Strange Aeons Marathon, which was live, and to be fair, uh, PaizoCon show that we're doing in two weeks, that's going to be live with uh, Nori Ibrahim, Alicia Marie, Skidmar, and Joe O'Brien, myself GMing. That's going to be live. The Strange Aeons Marathon on June 12th and 13th, that will be live. We're still going to do live shows, but I can't remember where I was going with this. Anytime we can pre-record shows to, to like get them in the tank it just allows us to have stuff prepped for weeks in advance so that we can start working on more stuff we can't do blades in the dark in the winter if getting the trunk and dune aren't in the can and and uh you know we just it's just impossible we can't do it we can't go week to week anymore we could do it with side quest side sesh because we shut down all of our other shows you know that was sustainable we can't do it with our other shows. And so while people, oh, this is what I was saying, is like when we did the Strange Aeons final night, we were paying so much attention to the chat, uh, the players and myself, that it I think it took away from the stream. Like obviously we we're making a lot of rules errors and so we were trying to correct it, but I think it took away from the stream. So we were moving towards a pace that was going to ignore the chat anyways. And so, if we're pre-recording it, it doesn't that engagement with the chat doesn't matter because we're not editing these. They're pre-recorded and then they're aired the way that they're recorded with just Grant spending uh, an innumerable amount of hours sweetening the audio, syncing it up to make it look awesome. So that doesn't mean we're not going to do any live content. I just think that Twitch is a platform that allows us to do whatever the F we want. And if we can put out a product that's better because we're taking our time with it to pre-record and sweeten and sync the audio, we're going to do that. Now, maybe we can do more after parties. Maybe we can do more like so-and-so's in the chat tonight. Hope you enjoy the episode. But like when you watch, uh, you know, Law and Order, whatever the fuck you watch, like that, that's not live. It's pre-recorded. That's why it looks so good. It's edited. That's that's our plan. The, the thing is, we're not editing it. Now, going back to your original question with GCP 2.0, yes, you can expect the highest quality. Now, I haven't decided. I don't think it's going to be live only because... One, we want to, we need to get these in the can. We can't just go week to week. It's not a sustainable model, especially as we expand the cast to six. Two, I want that show to look so fucking tight that there are no holes in it. And how do you do that? You pre-record it. Honestly, I would love to do a multi-cam setup like how Dimension 20 does it. Have it look pristine. Pre-record a bunch of these, release them, and then we all gather around the Twitch, the Twitch fire weekly, and we sit there and we watch the show for the first time. Yeah, you can listen to the podcast later. Yeah, you can listen on YouTube. You know what you can't do? Chat with your best buddies in the niche in the chat. And maybe we'll stop in as well. And maybe there'll be some after parties. I don't know for sure how it's all going to go down. But it's going to be fucking awesome. Let's look at some more questions here. Will streaming, uh, this is from Ectoplasmics. Will streaming GCP 2.0 mean longer sessions and episodes? I think so. I, 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 I still think that the one hour model is the best. I love doing an hour or, or like around an hour, but especially as we expand to six people, I think two hours might be good. I, I like the one and a half hour slot of A&A. &A. Um, I think it's probably going to fall somewhere between uh, 90 minutes and 120. I have not decided yet. If I decided, I'd tell you, uh, we're going to feel that out. But I think also as we go to six people and we're all going to be in studio, this is not going to be a remote stream, building a new set, I think that... If you go 90 minutes, you go two hours, you give everybody a little more chance to be involved. So that's the plan with that. Alexander says, will you use the free archetype in your 2E show? I saw a post on this on the subreddit. I guess it's a very popular, correct me if I'm wrong, house rule about uh, offering the free archetype to uh, 2E players to be able to multi-class without burning a feat. I'm probably paraphrasing a little bit. Um, my answer is... They'll be lucky if they get hero points. So don't ask me questions like that. Yeah, I'm going to leave that as my actual answer. Um, do, 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 do. Hyper Baby Duck, great handle, says, uh, are you worried that adding... This question was for Troy. Good, thank you. I thought I could answer it. Are you worried that adding more cast members to GCP could slow down the game and add the same difficulties that ANA has? Uh, I think we're all concerned about it, but not worried. And moving to being all in the same room or room when in room uh, I think that's going to be the the key 
We're going to practice a lot. Make sure that, every, like, the pacing that Joe Skid, Grant, Matthew, and I have when we're back in the room recording GCP. Talk about magic. Like, it's just, we know, we've done this for so long now. We know how, we know everyone's ticks. We know when, like, now's my turn to speak. Oh, Troy's doing that head movement. That means, like, he's not going to speak or he's about to speak. Like, we've got it down pat. We talk over each other in live streams because of the, the, uh, you know the difficulties with playing remote adding two people we've got to we've got to get them into that groove it's you know it's like any you know i grew up in the theater i grew up i got my mfa in acting like it's 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 like any other group you just got to work together and figure it out we didn't have that at the beginning and we got there we'll get there with the new group as well and we'll we'll make sure that we start where we need to we're not going to have a bunch of shitty episodes of us talking over each other and then it catches its footing it's going to start hot and we're going to do everything we need to do to make sure that it starts hot that's why pre-production on this thing is going to be massive massive what else we got here Do, 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 bam, bam. Oh, this is a good question. Uh, and I don't know the answer, but let's talk about it. Analog Caveman says, do you plan on having a week or, or two of breathing space between the end of Giant Slayer and the start of uh, GCP 2.0? I think there should be some breathing space. You know, when, I, when we started this, I remember like the listening to, looking up like uh, sort of diatribes from famous uh, podcasters. And Mark Maron's the godfather of podcasting at the time. Uh, now Rogan has sort of uh, unseated him, uh, whether you like him or not. He's popular. Uh, he said, like, the key was stick to a schedule, release every week, and never miss your schedule. And so that has been very important to us. It took, like, Skid getting COVID and uh, me almost dying from a reaction to a, an antibiotic to us to miss our first week during the pandemic and then obviously putting the shows on hiatus was a big decision during the pandemic as well now i think this is a different situation i don't see a world where we do the final episode of giant slayer can you imagine that episode i would love to rent out fucking carnegie hall and do it there uh do the final episode of giant slayer and then the next week like all right let's uh meet this fucking wizard that throws acid dart you know it's just I, I just don't see that happening uh will we do like some introductory session zeros will you will we take some weeks off will we revisit side quest side session i don't know i think everything's on the table i want the transition to be smooth and i want that first new episode to be hype and so I think for it to be that, it, there needs to be some space. How much space? Only time will tell. If Giant Slayer ends end of January, you know, you know, we're already starting to write chapter one right now of our story. Um, so I, I don't want to wait too long. I want to get into this, especially with Glass Cannon Con uh, on the horizon. Uh, hope that answered the question. All right. Check my texts. Okay, great. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Matt Tosis says, "How much inspiration did you guys uh, do? You, do you guys intend to take from Galarian for the GCP 2.0 world? A similar similar pantheon and general genre feel? Just a few deities in common? Nothing at all? Or is it too early to know for sure? Uh, in in a way, it's too early to know for sure. Uh, in another way, nothing at all. Uh, we're creating our own de deities, our own everything. You know, the the sort of." Behind the scenes reason is like we want our own intellectual property. We want to wholly own everything. Uh, we're also, uh, we couldn't be happier with our relationship with Paizo, which is evolving uh, in a way that will uh, hopefully be uh, announced very, very soon. It, it's, we're very excited. I mean, this was, this has been a dream collaboration with them and we're about to take it into a, in a very exciting new area. But we really want this to be our own world with our, completely different from Galarian. And I, uh, I don't know. I, I've talked about this a lot with my writing partner, uh, Dave Kang, and then I'm starting to get into these conversations with Jason Bullman. Uh, I, I really think we're going to do something. You know, when, you, when you're writing a fantasy RPG world, there's always going to be like, oh, that's been done. Or that's uh, we've, I've seen that before. But we want to try and, and, and throw rocks at all of that, you know? Uh, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give anything away, but it's, it's just really exciting. It's daunting, uh, but... We couldn't be more excited, and, and as you, you've seen the team we have in place, plus the team of players, and the team of players, the couple players that we're adding, we couldn't be more well-prepared to put out content like you've never seen. And uh, 
I mean, the Pathfinder 2E that I've been playing lately, I'm, I, I don't think I said this, I'm playing an Agents of Edgewash campaign on the side that David Winters is running for me and some amazing members of the niche. Uh, David, hope you don't mind me uh, saying that uh, if you're watching, but uh, I asked David a while ago, I was like, would you mind running me in like a small group through Agents of Edgewatch? I just want to play, I want to play and ask a million questions and really learn this game inside and out. And uh, I, I really think you guys are in for a treat. We started it with Emerald Spire. We started some 2E. It didn't have, the, you know, it was a victim of COVID more than anything else. But like, get excited. Get excited! Especially if you love 2E. If you love 2E, holy shit. Uh, what else we got here? Only a half a million questions. Actually, not, not as many as you think. Shellbell1014, you ever thought about adding a sign language interpreter to your Twitch live videos or any of your shows? You know, we haven't, but we've been approached by people for a long time. Kaya had asked uh, Joe early on about offering some opportunities uh, for for that. It's something we're, we're looking into, uh, you know, subtitling our videos or, or like offering some, uh, you know, offering more opportunities for, for everyone to be able to enjoy our shows is something uh, as we continue to grow, we're really trying to... Uh, find ways to do that work in the information age and it's 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 difficult because there's a lot of people out there's like i could transcribe your shows for a million dollars okay great and then they just send it to a robot that gets everything wrong uh there, there are a lot of complications but it's something we're very interested in and and i think you'll see it sometime uh in the future uh hopefully around the start of uh, glass cannon 2.0 we want everybody to be able to enjoy this um what else we got here Vertikai asked, Troy, when is movie night with Skid? The only reason, and I know this was a Patreon goal, and it was really just like a feeder goal to lead up to something else, but that, you know, there's some people who's like, I want him to get to that goal. Uh, it's coming. It, it's really, it's not, no, nobody wants to do it. It's complicated. We thought it'd be a lot simpler, but the integration between Twitch and Amazon Prime and OBS, it's a real pain in the ass, and it, it's given Skid fits. You just leave Skid alone. He's coming. He's getting to it. It's happening. I know him and Matthew were planning on doing one a couple weeks ago, and there was like another technical uh, fall through. So, it's coming. Uh, we just we want to do it right. We don't like doing things half-assed. That's not our that's not our jam. Uh, uh, the prank star asks, will Joe be involved with Delta Green season three as a player? If you ask me, yes. If you ask Joe, he goes, I don't want to. I can't. I, I, that's too much. I don't know. So I mean, I can't imagine him not being on it. But I don't want to say he's going to be on it and then have him pull out. Joe does so much beyond playing uh you know as, as ceo of the company uh he he not only has to deal with me and my uh, idiosyncrasies there's just a lot of shit going on as we continue to grow his plate gets f more full and more full so i would love him to be on season three and i'll like i do everything probably guilt him into doing it uh but maybe not yeah he'll be on it uh uh, OMF 5235, how much of the Pride merch proceeds are going to the Trevor Project? That's a good question. Uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly. We obviously, we did, uh, when we released the masks, a portion of those proceeds went to uh, Direct Relief. You know, we're doing something similar with the Trevor Project. Uh, I don't I don't know the exact number, but like we're, if it matters, we're not making a ton of money on this. You know, we just, we don't want to, we don't want to hemorrhage money while giving to a good cause. So our hope is to like get a lot of merch out there so that we can give a lot to the Trevor uh, project. Um, but we don't have a, a hard percentage because there's just a lot of math that has to be done to make sure that we don't like, oh, we just, we, we have a lot of money to the Trevor project, but we somehow screwed up and lost $10,000. Our goal isn't to like make some money and donate. Our goal is to uh, give to a good cause. If that's a good answer. Um, do, 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 do. How do you like this music? How do you like Minneapolis funk? Uh, all right. Desiree Armed says, how are you planning to integrate ideas from all of the writers on GCP2E? Will each writer have their own AP chapter? That's a good, uh, good question. I will say it's not going to work like a traditional AP. Uh, we have a different plan for this. It's not going to be a six-book, 50-something page adventure path. It's also not going to be a, a six-book, 40-something uh, page adventure path like Starfinder. We're thinking about this differently. We're thinking about this as, as chapters that are probably the same length as uh, these modules that we did for SideQuest SideSess, you know, a 32-pager. And so 
each writer will will most likely be responsible for one of those chapters they'll be working in concert with dave and i who will be coming up with the story and then giving it to them to make even better and bring themselves to it but we have uh, been having meetings monthly now for better part of uh, of a year with these writers and uh, just getting their input dave and i will meet every week a couple times a week and then we meet with the writers once a month to just kind of vomit on them give them a presentation and get feedback then we go back to the writing table come back and this the the story is very much in flux so everyone is contributing to this and and actually this started with a meeting with joe skid grant matthew and myself like talking about like what kind of game do you want to play what kind of world do you want it to be I mean, we had four or five long meetings just about that. And then they were involved with the first meeting with some of the writers we were talking to. And then they're out of the conversation because I don't want to spoil it for them. Uh, so each writer will be responsible for a chapter, but everyone, uh, we're, we're really trying to create a, an atmosphere of collaboration. And we have meetings every month that uh, they're not mandatory. Every writer shows up. Everybody is ex seems excited to be involved. And I mean, it's just... What a great group. We have so many different minds in there. So many people just throwing stuff at each other. Dave and I will walk away from it like, oh, we have to throw out everything we thought. This is so great. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at with that. Uh, do, 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 do. Three bowls of cake asks, you said recently the good GMs or players for new games are hard to find. How do you find new people? It's really hard. It's really hard. For some reason, like New York, the East Coast, like... It's not here. They're, they're all in L.A. The more I've got to know L.A. people through Jared Logan and, and getting to stream with Nora Ibrahim and, and all of them, like I've, I've started to meet more people. I, I'm on this really cool stream coming up. I don't know when it's going to be released, but we finished recording it yesterday with like heavyweights, L.A. heavyweights. Not, none of them are East Coast. Well, actually, Gabe was on the stream and he's on the East Coast, but like everyone's out there. It's really hard to network. I think if COVID had never happened, We'd still, Joe and I would still be having meetings like, Troy, you're really going to get there and network. I'm like, hey, we go out to LA to do a show. I'd love to guest on a bunch of shows or meet people, have drinks, go put in a round of golf with somebody. It's really hard. Everybody has their close knit communities, everybody has their groups. Uh, you know, I think one very, uh, one positive thing in the pandemic is people are branching out. And I think that we're becoming a name that people know and, and, and maybe maybe even respect. And so I, I've got a little more uh, sway now when I reach out to people like, hey, you want to guest on our stream? Um, hey, you want to run our stream? But finding someone to GM is a whole different ball game. You don't have to speak in my voice or Joe's voice or Skid's voice. I don't want, I don't, I don't need a bunch of clones up there. But it's got to be on brand for the Glass Cannon Network. And that's very hard. Jared is on brand. And that's why he's getting the keys to the castle for the Dungeons and Dragons 5e show. Um, it's very, very hard. I think, how, how do you find those people? Just keep gaming. Keep gaming and listening and uh, taking chances. I'm at the point now where my free time is spent, you know, networking, which is exciting because that's how we're going to, that's how we're really going to blow this shit up. Bow, 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 bow. All right, let's do another, another few here. Uh, do do big baja i haven't read this so i'm gonna just read it out loud one of the things ap's tend to do better than homebrew is having a clear and continuous storyline while a majority of homebrew stories tend to meander more do you hope to keep a similar pacing for the new glass cannon show as the current or do you hope to completely change up how you present the story with the new leeway homebrew allows for you all right so that's a good question in some ways this is a homebrew but in many ways it isn't like I, I think that I, I'm, I'm the driving force behind the story of this adventure path. And it's something that like, it's changing daily. And I, if I told you what the storyline is right now, what will actually happen will be wildly different. It's just, it's changing daily. I also want the way that we're creating this to like start playing it. And I have an outline for the later chapters of this story, but like there, I want to keep them loose because think about like what Skid brought in to Giant Slayer with Brander. Brander's down in the AP. How much has he changed the storyline? Think about what Sir Will and Highbury, how much that has changed the storyline. I want to leave room for that. But now I have the benefit of not sitting on my at my desk trying to come up with the ideas, but being able to go to the writer of chapter six, chapter seven, and be like, there's this dude named Brander. Can you work him in? There's this kingdom named Highbury that blah, blah, blah. Can you work it in? 
I mean, just having that team together to be able to bounce those ideas off of. You, you, there are homebrew elements. I'm going to have the the freedom to do whatever I want, you know, like a, like a like a homebrew GM. But I'm working with a story that uh, is malleable. It's protean from beginning to end. So I, I don't know. I think the possibilities are 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 are, are endless. But also, uh, it's. It's so much more contained because the backbone of this is going to be built by a number of different people and not just, you know, Johnny Homebrew, um, if that makes sense. Oh, that's a good one. Doom12151. Troy, how does it feel to be able to produce what is essentially a TV show? I know that's always been your dream. It really has. You know, the way I am is I'm thinking to myself, well, it's not really. When it's on Netflix, when it's on HBO, it's on CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox, then it's a TV show. But, like, that's where we're heading. That's where we want it to be. It's going to be a show that's going to be on TV every week. A two-hour show. One hour, 90-minute, two-hour show. It's as close to TV as possible. What's to say Twitch isn't as badass as Netflix, you know? So, you know, I, 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 my, the ambitious part of me is like, well, it's not really TV. But, like, the other part of me is like, yeah, this is this is a fucking dream come true. I, I'm a showrunner of, of my own show. It's my dream. When I look at like my list of things I wanted to accomplish by 50, it's like I could check another one off. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And and I, you know, if I haven't said this enough, not only is this only possible because of you guys and girls, but because of the the four guys with me, Matthew Skid, Grant, and Joe. Their tireless efforts in this have made all of this possible. And 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 I mean, like I said before, you've changed all of our lives. Uh, oh, X Grim Production says, do you need to have the vaccine to go to GCP Live? Better be careful how I answer this one. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but get vaccinated because it's the right thing to do. Don't be afraid of this shit. I'm double tapped. All the guys are double tapped. I was very lucky. I didn't have any reaction. Some people do have a reaction. You know what? It lasts for a day and then you're safe. Get vaccinated before I say something else. Just get, I don't know if it's going to be uh, vaccinated only. Kind of hope it is. I want to be safe. Get vaccinated. That's the right thing to do. Um, Dal Hidio says, will Cyberpunk Red be in the works or is it something not planned anytime soon? Man, this is the problem. It's a good problem to have. There's so many games that I want to play. I'm so glad we're going to get to be play Call of Cthulhu again. Uh, but like I'm dying to play Cyberpunk Red. I, I got Band of Blades and Scum and Villainy. I, I talked about Band of Blades on Fodder last week. I talked about Scum and Villainy earlier as a possible uh, A&A uh, bump. But uh, I pick up the book for Band of Blades. I read 15 pages. I'm like, this is so good. I want to play this. And I, then I just run through my head what we have planned for just the next six months. And I'm like, it can never happen. And that's kind of what I feel about Cyberpunk Red. I would love to get Caden Francis back on and, and get that team back together. I left, I feel like it was a really good Cliffy. Um, yes, it's going to come back when I have no fucking idea. It's just exhausting uh, to do all this shit. But uh, it's a game we loved. And so if we love it, we're going to play it again. Do, 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 do. Uh, SFB Dirt. I listen to GCP because it has traditionally stayed away from politics. Will this be the idea for the future content as well? Absolutely. If you have any questions about what I consider to be politics and not politics, and at the end of the day, it's semantics. One man's politics is another man's not politics. But what I'm interested in is uh, treating everybody like I want to be treated and uh, showing love to everyone, regardless of anything. Uh, and I also think people should get vaccinated. If you want to say, that's politics, you son of a gun. Well, I understand that. Uh, but our shows, that's not what our shows are about. Our shows are about entertaining. Our community is about opening the door to absolutely anybody. And also telling people who don't do that, that we're not really interested in you being in our community only because I don't want people being uh, to feel bad for who they are. So that's where we're at with politics, if that makes sense. Oh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. switching to 2E. This is from uh, Behodi. Will we see a return of Skids Nerdage? Skids Nerdage has never gone away. We just don't have the drop board uh, to play for the streams. Well, we have it in the studio. That's why you hear it on Glass Cannon. By the way, new Glass Cannon comes out in just a couple hours. Brennan, text me. Are we sold out in Atlanta and Indianapolis yet? 
By the way, 30 minutes ago, if you're just tuning in for some weird reason, uh, tickets to Glass Cannon Live Atlanta sh night one and night two, September 2nd and September 3rd have gone on sale. And also Indianapolis night one and night two, September 16th and September 18th. God, I've got to run four sessions of Strange Aeons. They all went on sale during Dragon Con and during Gen Con. Uh, Brennan's throwing those links in right now. Get those tickets, especially if you want to go VIP because it's a much smaller VIP this time around. It's a much different experience. We're going to be doing a smaller party, safe. I don't know if we'll have to wear masks or what the deal is. If you're going to be vexed, I don't know. If you're going to show your card, I don't know. We'll find out, but smaller. And we're also going to do a post-show um like debrief live for just the people that are there for the VIP. We're going to talk about like, can you believe that just happened? That we're going to adding that to experience as well, along with a souvenir badge that will go on a, a glass cannon lanyard. We're changing the VIP experience, but it's a limited number of tickets. So if you want to hang out with us, uh, definitely buy those tickets right now. I'll give you a second. All right, let's try and wrap this up here. Um, D N7 Dare Bear says, will 2.0, GCP 2.0, be a new podcast feed or will it follow the 1.0 show? So this is complicated. Uh, the easy answer is it'll be the same feed. The complicated answer is when we get to 300 episodes, we max out our feed. So what happens is we're going to continue Glass Cannon 2.0 on our main feed. But at a certain point, Glass Cannon Episode 1, Giant Slayer Episode 1, will disappear. And then when we add, add a new 2.0, Episode 2 will disappear because you can only have 300 episodes in the, in, the, in the pipeline. We learned this the hard way because during the pandemic while doing side quest side sesh, Episodes 1, 2, 3, 4 of Glass Cannon Podcast started disappearing. So that's why side quest side sesh ended up moving to its own feed because we didn't want to lose those GCPs. So I think what's going to happen... Why? Why is there a 300 limit? It's so fucking stupid. But that's what we're playing with. Unless that changes, I think what we're going to do is create a second RSS feed for the backlog of the original GCPs and just start adding those in so that any new fan that finds us can still listen to episode one somewhere, uh, but then we retain our highly valuable current RSS feed that we've been working on for six years. I mean, that feed is so fucking valuable uh, to put the new show on. That makes sense? Uh... Brennan texted me. Tickets are still available. Well, I assume they were, Brennan, but that's they, they shouldn't be. They should really you should you should buy them all up so that we can do this. Uh, have you come up with a title for the new show? Yes, the Glass Cannon Podcast. Uh, no, but the uh, the new world will have a title. Uh, the new campaign setting. You know, this is something we hope to publish somewhere down the line. Uh, this is all going to have names, but the show is going to be called the Glass Cannon Podcast. We just won't be playing Giant Slayer. We'll be playing Shimanabadu. Uh, I don't know. I'll come up with a name uh, at some point. It's the puns, the puns that I have to come up with for these titles of the episodes that exhaust me. Uh, Todd went out asks, any chance we can get an after the final rose style recap episode for after giant slayer? Just bring everyone back together for a casual chat about everything that went down. I'm sure we're going to have something like that right now. My plan is because we could very well have the last episode of giant slayer recorded months before it ever releases. Um, because we're recording these ahead of time so that we can start working on GCP 2.0 and Dune and Blaze in the Dark and all this other stuff. But I imagine uh, a situation that we'll do like we did in the old days, like Monday night, the day before the final episode comes up, at 8 p.m. we'll do like a red carpet live thing from the studio where we'll be there. We'll invite all our VIPs and, and people from the network and we'll, we'll reminisce live leading up to the midnight release of the episode. Maybe, or maybe we'll just we'll do it live like we did episode 250. I, I really don't know, but it'll it'll be special. Uh, it'll be a, a before the final rose instead of an after the final rose. Maybe I can't wait. I cannot wait. I mean, by the way, new Giant Slayer drops at midnight. These next few episodes are so effing hot they're gonna blow your mind. We're in the end game now. Um, speaking of the end game, don't forget to get a poster. The Road to the End available on GlassCannonNetwork.com. They're selling like hotcakes. All right. Uh, I need to go be a good husband in a second, but there's a lot of questions here. Uh, Turbulent93 asks, can you ensure Joe builds a poorly optimized character that has a great story for GCP 2.0? I all but guarantee it, good buddy. 
Uh, do Constrictor asks, since you're hiring writers, will you still have a very structured on the rail story or you'll be writing a world with open possibilities for the cast to forge their own path? B, I mean, you have to write these things. Well, you don't have to do anything. I really want to reinvent. Forget everything you know about adventure writing. You have to write the rails. You know, the rails have to be there. And then it's up to the GM if you want to keep them on the rails or if you want to let them play the game you want to play. One thing that I've learned, especially in running Call of Cthulhu, you know, you want to give the players enough rope to hang themselves with, but there's something to say with just letting them play the game they want to play and then finding your way around the story that you're trying to tell. So I think you're, we're going to find our way somewhere in the middle. But I'm going to encourage the writers to, to write you know, write in an open-ended way. That it, not, not necessarily that everything's a sandbox, but like there, there shouldn't be a, a correct way to do things. I'm not interested in like the optimum way. I want there to be real. I want to be able to sell this adventure at some point. I want to be able to publish and sell this so that people, a, a, a million different groups could play it a million different ways. Um, uh, Breakpoint Zero asks, what's in the VIP package for the live shows? If you click on those links, it'll tell you what's in the VIGCP package. But just to reiterate, um, there's an after party, uh, you know, autographs, drinks, good time, safely. Uh, there's going to be, we've added a, a post-show live debrief. Where we're going to sit on the edge of the stage and talk about what just happened live, you know, because the players don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. We're just going to reflect on it. Uh, you're going to get a, a souvenir badge that is uh, unique to that uh, show uh, with a lanyard. VIP, like uh, Wayne's World, uh, and fucking what else? I'm gonna click on the link myself so I can read it. Uh, there's something else. Oh, you get early entry into the show uh, to be able to choose your seats, and then you also get an opportunity to uh, buy merchandise without like having to deal with huge lines. So that's what you get uh, in the new VIGCP experience. Uh, Shell Bell 1014 asks how Troy how is Linus he's the best be sure to check out our Instagram I did an interview with him before the state of the nation uh, and it's up there Linus he gives a good interview do 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 do, do. all right uh, Brennan don't add any more questions I'm going to wrap these up and uh, call it a night and get another fresh beer I should have brought more do 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 Haiku asks, how close do you feel the company overall is to producing shows independent of the original members, like the new 5e show? I think we're closer than we've ever been. Close enough that we're actually doing it. Um, this is something that, like, especially a control freak like me, like, it has to be done a certain way. And I have the utmost confidence that Jared and this team of Claire Grant, Nora Ibrahim, Sidney Emanuel, and Ross Bryant are going to put on a show that is going to feel like Glass Cannon while also being its own new wild thing. Um, while I know that's going to be successful, I think it's going to give me the confidence to be able to add more shows. We're only going to be able to grow if we can have more shows that don't feature all of us and ideally don't feature any of us, but still feel like a Glass Cannon show. And as we build our uh, ensemble of players, it's going to happen. And uh, there's so many games to play. It's exciting. The more I think about it, it's just, it's so fucking exciting. Imagine what we have planned for the next year and then where we could be five years from now. Five years from now. So exciting. Uh, Warthog 155, how completed is your new world for GCP 2.0? It's not very, it, you know, not unlike the story. I want to leave the world open as well. I want the world to discover itself. You know, I think the traditional way of doing this, and it's nothing against the traditional way, is to draw the map. Here's the world. Uh, the, I posted on uh, on uh, my inst my personal Instagram a while back. I found these old drawings of like RPG maps I did when I was 12 or 13. It's like that's the traditional way. Here are the the so and so mountains, and here's the pit of the troll and the cave and stuff. That's not how I'm operating with this. I really want to focus in, and this all goes back to a conversation I had with Eric Mona about a year ago um, when Joe and I told him about this project and the plans for this project, and he introduced me to this idea. I think it was Gary Gygax who uh, had this idea about the bullseye approach to world building. It's like focus, and I was talking at a meeting with Jason Bullman last week, and he brought it up again. I was like, this is the way to do it. It's like 
focus here, create the details here as detailed as possible. And then on the next layer of the bullseye, fill in a few more details. And then out here, even less details. For us, I want the world to discover itself along the way. You know, if Skid's character says he's from the such and such mountains and I didn't create those mountains, now those mountains are a part of the adventure and they become a part of our world. The world is going to create itself as much as the writers and the players and improv and in the moment is going to create it. I really want to have a unique approach to how we do this. And that to me is the most exciting part about it. It's a world that is not fully formed. Um, yeah, so that's that. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Foreman2317, when are we getting Randy back? I'm going to try and have Randy uh, do, a, do a tight tight 15 before our New York show that we have planned for later this year. Uh, you know, COVID pending. Uh, the chief is calamity says giant slayer animated series. Maybe our next goal, our $90,000 goal on Patreon, which odds are we could be at, uh, by the end of the year, next couple months is to do an animated pilot of something. They're very expensive to do five minutes of an animated pilot it costs more than $90,000. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe giant slayer, Maybe get in the truck. There's a lot of good shows that could be animated, but I think that would be so fun to do. Can you imagine getting the trunk on like a uh, Cartoon Network at midnight? Go Rick and Morty straight into a little fucking get in the trunk. Yeah, that that's when you can ask. Troy, what does it feel like to have your own show on a, you're writing your own TV show, even though Joe's the handler on that one? Um, do, 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 do. Oh, uh, Will Saga, Sagu Matra says, will you do GCP character creation on stream? I love watching you guys create characters in NGWD. I don't know if we'll do a session zero and put it as part of the, you know, part of the, you know, the, 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 the RSS feed. If we'll do a stream, well, that's kind of, I don't know. But I imagine that will be part of the process somehow. I don't know if we'll do something similar to we did with the uh, androids and aliens characters or, or like those little videos, but we'll do something. I don't know how it's going to manifest. Um, oh, that was the sec next question. Skill Ganon 55 says, will we have character introductions for the new GCP 2.0 like from the way back times? Uh, something like that, but better, higher production quality. We were in our first little closet office when we did this. Um, OMF5235 says, one of the best things about the OG crew is their knowledge of lore in each game you play. Do you have any, having any shows or podcasts which dive into the lore of the world you are creating prior to the show being released or companion podcasts? I, I mean, nothing off specific off the time of my, top of my head, but I think as you listen to like, you know, shows that Skid does uh, on Patreon, you know, he's very heavily into the lore. There's been some really cool stuff with uh, the Strix recently, like he gets into it. And, and as we create this new world, the lore doesn't exist yet. I mean, it does in what we've already written, but like it's going to unveil itself as well. For people who like lore, it's going to be there. Are there going to be shows dedicated completely to the lore? Probably not. Um, Dark May Maze 27 says, will GCP2E take over the Friday night Twitch spot? I, I, I don't think so. It might. Uh, I don't really have any plans for that spot right now. Um, I don't know what day of the week it will release. I kind of want it to release when it releases, but I don't know. Maybe it'll come out on a Tuesday night and then release as a podcast the following week. I don't know. I have to decide that. I've definitely thought about it. I just haven't made a decision. Um... Cliff Cliff Ord says, can you share info on what podcast will be in the studio versus out? When will like Raiders be back in the studio? Will 5e be an in-person game? Get in the trunk, do it in Blades. Right now, we only have plans to record Glass Cannon podcasts in studio um, for COVID, for uh, COVID safety, and also for uh, ease of recording. It's so easy for us to record remotely. We just think our flagship show needs to stay in studio for that extra bit of quality. Um, that doesn't mean we don't want to get Raiders back in there and Legacy. Uh, I can't imagine playing Delta Green together. We have never done that. That would be so fun. 5e is going to be remote um, because there's players on both coasts that are playing. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, Dune will be remote as well. Blades remote. We're going to try, we're, we're, we're trying to take what's left of remote and uh or not what's left of remote what we have available to us remote and squeezing the life out of it as much as we can because again it allows us to create more content uh i really wish i had more beer anyways i'm wrapping up here 
Captain Frucci says, where would you like to see the network by the end of 2022? That's going to be the last question of the night. Where would I like to see the network by the end of 2022? I'd like to see uh, the new Glass Cannon 2.0 up and popping with thousands of people watching every week. I'd like to be selling out bigger venues uh, than we sell out now. And, and we do. We're very lucky. We sell out. 300 seat venues left and right and I, I hope with the return of the tour you know the niche has grown so much in the past year we were selling out 300 seat venues hopefully we still can and hopefully we can sell those out with ease so that we can start moving to bigger venues so I want the tour to be continually blowing up to larger and larger audiences and I want to get ready to unleash this con on people because it's not the con you think it's going to be uh if i have my way and uh, i'm really excited about it and then in the meantime i'd like to have multiple shows multiple streams multiple podcasts multiple exclusive shows and a netflix deal by the end of 22 well we'll see what happens in the meantime i am signing off i've i've been nursing this one beer i'm sweaty i'm gross i i, uh, I guess i don't look too bad a little, a little greasy but anyways, thank you for, for tuning in. I probably went a little longer uh, than I thought I would, but hopefully I was able to answer your questions. A lot of exciting stuff happening. The future is very bright for the Glass Cannon Network and even brighter for the Nash, for you evangelists of what we do. Thank you. Please tell your friends. Grab their phones. Subscribe to our shows. Tell your friends to check out what we do. I think we're pretty cool guys. We have a good time. And we have a lot of fun, exciting things to come. The same content that we've always had since episode one of the Glass Cannon Podcast when it was just five friends, some new friends, hanging out in an apartment playing our favorite role-playing game and making a show out of it. Now we just do that to a lot more people with better equipment and better snacks. Good night, Nash. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next year for the State of the Nation 2022. Good night, America!